back up at this lovely little nuke yard to divide up these nukes and double my money. Yup, that's it, we just cut these in two, I leave the queen in place and I take the nukes that are just queenless back to the mating station and give them a new queen. And that's how you can double up on your nukes really quickly. These were made before the start of the flow, they are brought up here, they've had a whole valley to themselves, they're now enormous, they need splitting and this is what we do to make easy nukes for next year. Right, so I've got my empty nuke here. The front is foamed off. Rather than having partitions in this nuke, I've just got um, a frame of foundation because three more are going to go back into this one and three from this one are going to come to this one to make my split. At this time of year, we are now mid-July, so it's really, really easy and simple to make these splits. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm profiting from the good weather we've had profiting from the flow. I knew that if I got my bees in this position and I got enough nukes made early on that I could then split those nukes and make something of it and really profit from what I've had already. So we have prolific queens ready at the right time put into the right nukes and now they've been put, they're mated, they've been moved to here and they've had four and a half, three and, three and a half, four weeks of uh, the flow and they're now really ready to cut them off because if not they can, they can abscond in this apiary. The problem with this apiary is, it is a wonderful apiary, but it does get the sun at the end of the day. And often at the end of the day, it is sunny, and it's like a sun trap. It's sort of west, west, northwest facing, so it gets the sun right in the centre. And as it's an old quarry, it dries out, and there's very, very little humidity here. It's a little bit more shaded than it was originally. I've let the trees go up a bit to give it a bit more shade. But you can get absconding. And this time of year, you don't really want to lose your bees, because this time of year is when you really want to like start to get what you've got left to grow. Now we haven't quite got that far yet. We haven't got quite got the, as far as like uh, mid to August where I'm worried that I won't be able to get that queen, that colony queen right back before the end of the year. But what I can do is I can split these and give them room. Room so they can grow in their own time and if it does get hot they've got that little bit more space to ventilate if they need to. At the moment they're packed and I feel that if we have a really hot spell which is coming next week uh, back up to the 28, 29, 30 degrees C again. If we get that, these bees could abscond quite easily because there's just so much food in these boxes, you'll see in a minute, and so much, um, so much filled space. They need space to ventilate, and having a smaller colony will be just right so they'll grow a little bit during the summer. I'm going to come and feed them. I'm probably going to give them a pollen sub in the, in the last week of August to give them that boost. Um, I'm going to get mite treatments in as well, so that's all to do. But uh, Let's open this up, I'll show you what the insides are like, and then I'll show you how I divide it up. It's pretty basic stuff. The main thing to remember is the queen is going to stay in this box. So I can actually take more resources from this box than I need to, because it's already got a mated queen. And already that queen is going to basically stay there and just grow over the summer, providing I give it the opportunity to do that, which I will do. They're full of food, I'll leave a frame of food, I'll, at least, I'll probably two and I'll leave a frame of bees and brood, and so there'll be a mix of the third frame will be the two. So it'll be one frame of bees and brood, one frame of feed, and the other one will be the mix at the minimum. And don't forget, a lot of the forager bees are out at the moment as we speak, foraging. So this is why it's easy. I'm not going to wear gloves. I don't usually wear gloves when I'm working my bees, except when I'm doing a major thing like harvesting or um, cutting out queen cells, or at a time when there's a lot going on, like robbing and stuff like that. If I can get away with that wearing gloves, I generally do, because it gives you the feel of the colony better. These are the first chance I've had to actually assess the first queens we've made this year, so I'll be able to see the new bees coming on, and I'll be able to see what they actually are handled like. And if you see me put gloves on, you know it's not going to be good. <laughs> but I don't think we'll have any problem. Generally, they're fairly gentle, and we shouldn't have too much problem. Anyway, let's get cracking. So, three frames out, let's open up the nuke. Full of bees, every single frame is full of honey, 
I can see this one was drawn up last. So I'll take this one out first. It's the smallest frame. I've always got a job to get the first frame out of these, but you have to run these on six frames because you run them on five, you'll never run it. Look at that frame. I've got eggs in there. I've got brood. I've got so much pollen and stores. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try and put it a bit close up so you can see. There's everything in there I need. What I want to do is check the queen isn't in there. I don't want to take her away because this, this will then be under challenge to make a new queen. And where I am here, there's a lot of um, amateurs colonies and I say that with the greatest respect, but they don't have the genetics I want. And if my queen's mate here up the road, there's a guy who has black bees and they are atrocious. So I'm just going to check here, but I don't think the queen is here because every cell is laid up. That's all pollen. This is all honey here. So it's absolutely wonderful frames. All eggs the other side. This is the perfect time to split these colonies. So that's the first frame of three. I'll put that in the outside frame because it was the outside on the colony. So find the next one. Have a look in here. Frame of cat brood. That's coming with me. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. A little bit spotty there. So you could ask yourself, why is that a little bit spotty? Well, first of all, I can see in those holes, I can see lumps of pollen or bee bread. So I'm not particularly worried. But it, it could also be that because uh, my bees are perhaps they're being slightly hygienic and are they yanking out that larvae because they can sense a Varroa, female Varroa underneath that, producing, producing mites, who knows? We'll do Varroa testing on these colonies later on in the year and see how they look. But that's a good frame to take. Okay, no sign of the queen yet, but I know she's here. Another frame of bees and brood. Beautiful. absolutely packed full. They are desperate for room. I'm so glad I came today because look at the colour of pollen. We've got green there which is like a clover pollen and if you can see that you can see a green there and that's clover pollen and obviously chestnut pollen. That's the two pollens we've got around at the moment. Pale green. Lovely bees. I'm very happy with this. I'll put this one back in for a minute because I want to find a, con a frame with a little few more bees on and maybe I'll give a little shake and we'll see what happens then. You've just got to be aware of the amount of bees you have. This is the kind of frame I want to take with me really. It's more of a mix. It's not a block of one or a block of the other. So as long as the queen isn't on this one, this one's coming with me. And those of you who've been observing, you'll see that there. It looks like a queen cell, but it actually isn't. It's just a play cup. There's nothing in that one, so I'm not fussed. But this is a frame that's going to come with me. There's plenty of bees there. They're a little bit runny, but it is a really hot day. Oh, there's our queen, right. She's not marked, so I need to get her marked. Here's my queen clip. Look away, she's gone. I'll look back and she'll come back. There she is. Beautiful queen. Oh, don't you go anywhere, dear. Nearly squashed her. So careful you've got to be with the queen clip. So, pop this in the nuke. There we go. Beautiful. I'm actually going to turn this around because this side, well, is more of an outside frame and there's more space to take this frame on this side. Because I've used alternate frames here, you've got to be sure there's a gap between the frames so that the bees can move. They will reduce it themselves, and you can poke away a bit of it, and it gives them a little bit more work. But it's nice to pick a frame at the start that is an outside frame if it's the outside frame to your, to your colony you're putting together, okay? So I'm going to shake a little few more bees off these. I know the queen's in there. And I can shake some more from the other frame because I know that where the queen is. There she is. And if you can see her there, I'll try and give you a little look. 
Brittany Queens. The mother was a um, a Keld Brandstrup, and the uh, she was open mated amongst all our drones from different uh, breeders we've got at the mating station at home this year. So she looks pretty good, and she's producing well, full of brood as you saw. So what I do now is I'm going to gap up this. Plenty of brood in that side as well, and then move this stall, this frame over. So I like to have it. If you are making a split. Look at that brood as well. Beautiful. Eggs and larvae everywhere. This is a lovely colony. In fact, I'm going to give that a little bit more because there's so much brood about to hatch in this one. And that makes a really nice strong nuke to come away with. With plenty of bees and larvae. In go my three partitions. Two. Three. Sorry. In go my three foundation, not partitions. No partitions in this nuke. Now, on goes my plastic. Dig it out there, because it's very sticky. Notice I'm not worried about closing up the other nuke very quickly because the forager bees have gone. That's why when I take this back home, I need to give it a feed. I mustn't forget to put the queen back in this one. In she goes. There she is. Come on, dear. Oh, how about we mark her first? It'll be a lot easier. So I've just been to mark the queen. You might see a little green dot running around there now. So she's going to have a few minutes to dry, but always leave her in the shade. So I'm putting her behind my smoker out the sun. It's really important she doesn't get stressed. I'm just going to put this back together now. Close the lid of my nuke I've made. It's all great. Get these bees back in. Come on girls, there we go. They're back in that nuke, got plenty of bees in that nuke. I'll be able to give it a queen either when I get home tonight. I think I've got some virgins still in the bank. Good. That lid goes on there. I think I'm missing a plastic for the moment on that one, but I'll find that one after. Oh, here it is around my feet. Just pop this on. So this means I can then get a, a feeder spread on that when I get home. All I've got to do is fold that back and on goes the feeder. That nuke is now done. That split is made. That is it for the year. That's all I have to do with this colony. Give it a queen. This one just needs looking after now. Back on goes the rubber. And I know that that one is ready to go back home. I've opened up when I get home. Keep these in the shade till I get back home today. Dead easy, done. Nice weight as well to it. So back in goes our queen. She's dry. Come on, dear. Go on, off you go. Thank you. So, she's back in. Everything is good. Feeder on top, right over the hole. I'll leave that like that for now. I know that it needs feeding now, but this will be great. This will be full of feed. And I won't have to do anything. It rages now. I walk on. It's all about keeping that impetus going. We're just coming to the end of our flow and the bees have just been split in two. So they need to replace those three frames of foundations. You've got to pay for it. But so what? What's a bit of liquid sugar? It's all about realizing what your costs are. And when you know that, you're always on to winning because you know what you've got to pay. You know what you've got to give the bees so they can make up for your, from what you've taken from them. So that is those 10, 11, 12 done now and uh, they were really really fantastic i'm absolutely delighted by what i found they were all um, queen right they were all absolutely packed full and to the point where one had actually uh, superseded through my fault because um, 
they were basically two packs. But that's just my fault, it's something to remember for next time. But I couldn't fault it because I managed to get the Virgin and also uh, leave the Queen in the box. So they've got room now, I've cut them in three, as you know cut them into three frames for each box and they're absolutely fantastic so those nukes I'm going to take off home now give them a queen the next few days let, I'll probably let these be hopelessly queenless first because I don't have I've got queens in the in the builder now that I've got to, got to put out tonight into the finishers um, but that's the way it is it's just go 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 until this is all done one other little thing I'll just add is if you're in an apiary all day or the afternoon and it's stinking hot like it is here sun blazing into this apiary you know Put your nukes as you make them in the shade and make sure they're off the grass. Make sure they're ventilated. Like that, they're fine. The frames are all in order. It doesn't matter. There's no queen in there you can kill because the queens are all in the other boxes, okay? Don't leave them like this. These two are actually empty. Don't see the bottom is blocked by the grass. You've got to think like that. There's only small ventilations in these nukes, but okay, there's only three frames of bees and brood, but it's still enough to kill a colony on a hot day. So think wise, think smart, think ahead and be organized. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, it gives me a chance to show you how I make my nukes. It's not rocket science at all. It basically shows you what you can achieve when you get everything right and you get everything organized. But it's only, it's only worth knowing because if it fits in with what you could do in your area. We know that we have a flow in uh, April and May. In June, we get the gap. In July, we get the, the, the next flow. And then it's finished. We're just about finishing our flow now. And it's gonna be nothing now until the middle of September. Other people in the UK, and in Europe have um, uh, the, um, the uh, header flows, which can be enormous. And, but at the moment, our header flow here, which is only in a certain area near us, but it's about um, 25, 30 kilometers away, it isn't worth me doing it because A, this year it's bone dry, and B, everyone else turns up with their dog and their kids and everything, and there's like hundreds of hives in one area. So it's just not worth doing. Um, there you go, that's it. That is all we have. So we're just basically now splitting splitting, splitting as quick as we can, getting them all done, getting boxes filled, because the clock is still ticking. We've only got another two or three sets of graphs to do, and then all those nukes are gonna be done, and then that is it. That is it for the year, our, our work is done. There's nothing more we can do apart from mite treat, and monitor, and feed. And this year we'll probably have a lot of feeding to do. But who cares, we've got the feed at home in the workshop, that's what it's there for. If they need it, they can have it. That's what you're organized for. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.